Good morning, church. Isn't it joyful to be in the house of the Lord um, on this Sabbath morning? We are, we are indeed privileged to be to be here. God is, God is very special. He is good to us, and I am, you know, I am delighted that we are able to spend time in his courts in uh, acknowledging his goodness and his greatness. Um, this morning, the Sabbath school lesson will be, um, uh, will be shared um, by myself, um, um, Keith Allen, um, Elder Leslie Thomas, and uh, Sister Lorraine Armstrong. We are, uh, we are your servants today, and uh, we want to, by God's grace, um, share the word um, with you. And so, before we begin, let me just invite you um, to bow your heads and let us have a word of prayer. Our Father, um, today is your special day. Today is uh, the day when we can come together um, in fellowship, in a lifting up your name, ascribing praise and the glory and the adoration to you because you are worthy. Father, as we spend uh, um, uh, the time uh, this morning in uh, looking at the lessons that we have been um, studying this week, Lord, may we find rich nuggets um, for the transformation of our lives. Draw us close to you today, we pray, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our, our, lesson, our lesson this week um, focuses on Jesus, uh, the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. Um, now, when we talk about when we talk about perfect, I, I do not know what what um, is conjured up in your mind, but in my mind, uh, when we talk about perfect, we are talking about something that is without blemish. We are talking about something that. At the zenith of quality, um, something that cannot be improved upon. And so when we, when we are looking at this, this topic, Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, it tells me that this sacrifice is the ultimate. It says that this sacrifice is at the top. It cannot be improved upon. It cannot be added to. If one chooses to add to it, you are indeed taken away from it because it is pure. It is absolute. It is perfect, as the lesson says. When we talk about sacrifice, then we are talking about the foregoing of something. You are making a sacrifice and so you are foregoing something. Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. It is my hope today that as we share the lesson, we will not simply um, look at the lesson in the historical context for head knowledge, but we would seek to apply the lesson to our lives today. What does it mean to us today? when we look at Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. And this is my aim for, for today as we share the lesson um, together. Um, all right. Let me, um, let me um, just, just begin by um, giving the opportunity to um, uh, my two colleagues at this juncture, if you have anything to say, um, Please, you can do so now. Um, so when I 
studied this lesson this week, it caused my heart to, to burn with excitement and at the same time with pain. Excitement for the fact that looking again at the sacrifice that Jesus has made for me has consolidated my faith in him and my worth as a human being. And burned with pain because what he has, what he suffered was not for him. It wasn't because of anything that he has done, but it was because of what I have done, what we have done. And, but we could not do anything to ratify the sin that we committed. So he had to come in our stead and suffer and die to sanctify us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our memory verse says, um, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Now, let me open it up to the, um, the church this morning. Um, what do you understand by this memory verse, um, this memory text? For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Um, what does it mean to you? What does it say to you? What is it referring to? How do you relate to it? Any, um, anyone from the, um, from the, the, the congregation? All right, whilst you are getting your thoughts together, um, let, me, let me just ask the, um, the panel, what what does this what does this text mean to you? Um, how do you relate to it? Sanctification we know is a daily process, um, and so as as the memory verse said, those who are being sanctified. So it is a daily process that we go through. As, 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 as um, Adventists, we know that we do not believe in once save, always save. So we have to seek forgiveness. We have to seek cleansing. We have to seek sanctification on a daily basis. Okay. I think that um, uh, the, we need to compare what Christ did with the system that existed before and in the old system, in the sanctuary system, there were daily and yearly sacrifices. They were constantly being um, uh, done. But through Christ, he did not need to perform a sacrifice on a daily or yearly basis. His single offering of his single sacrifice is able to do the job and it need not be repeated. The issue of why a sacrifice was necessary, and we'll, we'll come to that a little later, is that, is that um, um, man, the, a, a sacrifice was necessary to deal with the sin problem. Um, humanity had fallen into sin, and God had to find, and God implemented a system that can deal with the sin problem. And the sin problem is not only about the eradication of sin or about forgiveness, but also those who fall into sin, giving them hope. And, and therefore, in this text, we find that there is hope for those who have sinned. We are being sanctified, which is the hope that, uh, that, is, uh, that we have. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so we we um, we've heard about um, we've heard about the sin problem. We know about the sin problem. We feel the sin problem. 
because, you know, um, we see it manifested in front of our eyes. Um, sometimes it is manifested on our very doorstep, the sin problem. Um, and so the question was asked, why were sacrifices necessary? Why were sacrifices necessary? Now, in your search of the lesson this week, um, what is your conclusion? Why, was, um, why were sacrifices necessary? And notice, notice we are talking about sacrifices, um, plural, which we seem to point to um, the olden days, um, the plurality of sacrifices. Why were they necessary? Um, Sister Ruth. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today as we celebrate his holy day. Um, I'm still learning, so if I go wrong, please correct me. Now, here I'll say, as the question that is being asked here, I say, by means of his death, he is the new mediator, and his grace is sufficient because of his sacrifice for us all. Because of, because of our weaknesses, that is why we needed him as a lamb to come and die for us. He was slain, and because of our sin, that's why he died for us so that we can be saved. And also for providing redemption for the sins that we have committed. Amen. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any, um, anybody else? Okay. We um we are addressing the question: Why were sacrifices um, needed? Good morning, Sabbath School. I did not study the lesson, but as far as I gain, I understand that Jesus loved us from the foundation of the world. Because before he made us, he and his father had that the plan of redemption from heaven. And Jesus Christ, God said to the father, God, God said to Jesus, what if man should sin? And Jesus Christ said, I will go down and die for them. So that plan was laid aside for us before we were created in our mother's womb. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Sister Colleen. Good morning, Sabbath School. I hope what I have to say will sort of make sense. Basically, I was reading and I was thinking that there were sacrifices that was made, such as people were killing animals, which was the shedding of blood, which was also pointing to the death of Jesus who was to come. And I've read as well to say that without the remission of, without the, clean, the, the shedding of blood, there, there was no remission of sin. All right. Uh, thank you so much, um, Sister Joy. My word, this is what the quarterly says. And it says, sacrifices are necessary because covenant often were ratified through animal sacrifices. And it also says, when Israel broke the covenant, the demand that the transgressors died was fulfilled by Jesus, who died once for all humanity. The Levites offered sacrifices continually because their sacrifices were not effective. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So this is a very, um, um, this um, question troubled me a bit uh, 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 while, I, while I studied. As a matter of fact, I had this discussion with my wife, and I said to her uh, in answering the question why sacrifices are needed, and I asked her if her child sinned or did something wrong, um, why do you require that he kill his pet hamster? Why can't you just forgive him? Why does it require the death of something to deal with the question of his transgression? And we debated it for some time without any 
any, any, any clear or convincing argument as, as to why sacrifices are, are necessary. But I, I, I think that in my own mind, I, I believe that sacrifices were needed to impress upon the transgressor the, the, um, the extent of the transgression that he has committed. Uh, when, when Adam and Eve saw the lamb being slain so that they can be covered, um, I think the question of what they had done really dawned upon them that death had to occur so that you can be covered for the transgression that you have committed. And, 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 and therefore, the, the issue of the sacrifices being necessary should force us to see the gravity of our state and want to do something about it. Sacrifice is necessary for us and not for God. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, the Bible tells us that sin, uh, sin is so enormous. Sin is anti-God. And the Bible says, um, uh, you know, the, the wages of sin is death. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. So death is, uh, the, is what is demanded because of sin. And so when man sinned, when man sinned, man needed to know that the consequence of their sin is death. And not, and not the sleep that you and I will do one day. Not, not that sleep. We are, talking about, we are talking about oblivion. We are talking about hell. We are talking whatever, whatever um, description you put on it. We are talking about complete separation, annihilation. We are talking about death. The Bible says death is the consequence. And so, and so because Jesus was um, to be the sacrifice, and uh, we are talking about like 4,000 years from, uh, from, from Adam and Eve before Jesus came. Those that sinned in those times needed to know the enormity of their sin, the consequence of their sin. And so the animal sacrifices, they, they were instituted to, um, to bring to the attention of those present and those who are committing these sins. Let them know that this is the enormity of their sin. But we know, we know that animal sacrifices could not atone. We know that. And with that knowledge, that indeed should have driven home to these individuals of yesteryear the enormity of what they have done. And so this was why these, the animal sacrifices were introduced, were, were instituted. Um, they were but symbols of what was to come. Um, and uh, brothers and sisters, we want to thank God because Jesus came into our world to put to an end that gruesome, horrible, um, thought-crushing idea of every time you, you, um, you sin, you have to find an animal to kill. Um, I don't know how many of you would be able to take, um, to take a lamb and look in the eyes of the lamb and slit his throat. Um, that is against me. That's against me. And the Bible says, you know, uh, that type of thing was blotted out when Jesus hung on the cross and died. Christian friends, this is victory for you and me. This is victory for you and me. The death of Christ, the death of Christ, though enormous, um, it's victory for you and I. Um, and, you Karen. know, Elder, as I, as I studied the lesson this week, 
I remember walking from the recovery room to the canteen to have my lunch. And in doing so, I had to walk past the, the theaters. And um, the smell of burning flesh is not a very nice thing. Not at all. And the thought that this occurred every day, that must have been a bloody scene associated with great stench. And as I thought about it, I, I, I came to the conclusion that the stench in the sanctuary must have been associated with the stench of sin. Of the enormity of sin. You know? And, and, and so... It was not possible, the Levitical priest, the order, the Melchizedek order, was not enough to ratify, to pardon, and to sanctify us. And so Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, came and died so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want, to, um, I want to skip over the diversity of sacrifices the, um, because we know that there were many, there were numerous kinds of sacrifices. In fact, in, in fact the, on, the, um, on the Monday section, it highlighted the many different types of sacrifices, burnt offerings, um, a gift of gratitude, uh, that is the grain offering, the peace offering, the, uh, the sin offering, and the, the guilt offering. Um, and perhaps, perhaps I would, I would just like to um, look at just one here: the guilt or reparation offering. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that this one, this one, really applies to us in um, in some in some depth, because um, you know when we when we do something to our brothers, when we when we have done something to our brothers, normally. It is calculated. Normally, it is willful. Um, it, it's a conscious decision we've made to do something to our brothers. Um, the, the guilt offering, the guilt offering here, you know, is, is something that we, these, these individuals did and to atone for the guilt that they feel for having done something. And even though, even though this was a sacrifice, and theoretically and symbolically they, they are forgiven, this, this particular offering um, speaks about reparation, it, which, means, which means you have done me something wrong. And even though, even though you have been forgiven, you have not been absolved from the fact that you need to give reparation to me. You um, you perhaps need to give me some some um, some gift because you have wronged me in such a way. So so this offering was actually dealing with that. Today, Christian friends, we might be um, uh, you. I may have done you something wrong, and I come and ask for forgiveness. And you say, brother, I forgive you. I forgive you. This provides for me to go out and buy you a bunch of flowers or, or a box of chocolates. Um, oops, did I say chocolate? Uh, buy you a bunch of flowers. Why? Because of the fact that you have done me something wrong. And you have been gracious enough to forgive me of that, of that wrong. Um, and so... You and I need to look at this um, as applying to me, even though it has an historical setting. And that's all I want to say about, about this section, because I quickly want to deal with Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I want to deal with Jesus, the perfect sacrifice. Um, let me ask the question, why is Jesus... The perfect sacrifice. I'm throwing that out to the um, to the church. Why is Jesus the perfect sacrifice? Come, 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 
you have something important to say. Let's. Uh, I think here that um, Jesus is the perfect sacrifice because he never sinned. Okay. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ never sinned. So he is the perfect sacrifice. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anita. I'll add to that. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice because he died for everyone on the planet. Not only that, he's the second person of the Godhead. And God's Ten Commandments, his law was broken. And only one equal with the law of God could pay the price for our redemption. As we said in previous um, lessons, um, the Ten Commandments was broken and only Jesus equal to the Father could have paid the debt. The debt was so enormous, no human being could do it. And also the animal sacrifices pointed forward to when Jesus would come 2,000 years ago. And we, 2,000 years later, looking back what he has done. So from eternity past, whenever that was, because God always existed, he never, there wasn't a time when he didn't exist, they um, made the, 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 the arrangement that if man should sin, they'll create man on earth. And if man should sin, that Jesus will pay the price for the sins of the whole world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Just to add to all that has been said, I see Jesus as a perfect sacrifice because one of the reasons was Elder Johnson was talking about reparation, but while Jesus was on the cross, he forgave the sins of those who crucified him. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They did not pay any reparation. They did not ask for forgiveness, but he forgave them. So this is perfect, you know, in a way. And adding to all that has been said, I see this as him being a perfect sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, second, all the different kinds of sacrifices of the Old Testament found their fulfillment at the cross. Thus, Jesus not only cleanses us from sin, but he also provides sanctification by putting sin away from our lives before the priest could have approached Jesus, sorry, before the priest could approach God in the sanctuary and minister on our behalf of their fellow human being, they had to be cleansed and sanctified or consecrated. All right. The next paragraph. Oh, I can't. Waited. Okay, um, Jesus' sacrifice cleanses us and consecrated us so that we may approach God with confidence and serve him as royal priesthood. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Any, any, anybody else on this? Um, the Levitical priest elder, they had to have successes because... They, they, they did not have eternal life. They died. Okay. But when Jesus came, he did not need to have a successor because he lives forever. So his sacrifice was final, it was eternal, and needed no successor. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see Jesus as the perfect sacrifice because now he is interceding on my behalf and your behalf. Uh, one that came as flesh and blood like you and I and knows everything what we are going through. Therefore, for me, that makes him the perfect sacrifice for me. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Did I make a comment? Um, the term perfect sacrifice 
um, did stick, stick out in my mind in, in relation to what, perfect in relation to what. Um, probably the old system that they had was the old system imperfect. And I, I thought that maybe not because God is the person who designed that old sacrificial system. And you cannot argue that God designed an imperfect system and that the system that existed uh, accomplished the purpose for which it was designed. So it was not necessarily imperfect, but it, it was not the system that would deal again with this issue of sin. The, 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 the system that was implemented was not intended or designed to deal with the issue of sin. It was Christ's um, 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 intervention that would have dealt with the issue of sin. So we have this sin problem, and, 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 and the Bible says that Christ died from the foundation of the, earth, of the world. So God did not implement this system of Christ dying after man sinned. He did it before man sinned. And so, so God's plan for the rescue of mankind was accomplished long before mankind even sinned. And it was not an afterthought. So God understood what was required if sin did enter the world. God looked and saw when God contemplated his own nature and felt that if man sinned, how can man participate in various aspects of his nature? How can man be uh, good? How can man become kind? How can man become generous? How can man be sanctified? How can man be saved? All of these things was made possible through the death of Christ. It is after Christ died that I can become what God intended me to become. God's sacrifice was the perfect sacrifice to deal with the problem of sin. Not blood of bullocks and so on. They cannot sanctify me. You understand? They cannot change me. They cannot transform me. They cannot restore my relationship that was broken when I sinned. So restoration, forgiveness, sanctification, all of that is found in the single sacrifice of Christ. Remember all those things that, Keith, that Elder Keith glided over early on? Where we had to give a sacrifice for this and a sacrifice for that and another sacrifice for this and another sacrifice for that. Not necessary anymore. One single sacrifice of Christ fulfill all of these requirements. Under the old system, I cannot be made perfect. Only until Christ died can the individual become perfect. And that is why Christ's sacrifice was a perfect sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Hi. I don't think there's any question. We, we know that, um, we know that um, it wasn't an afterthought. That's not a question. With the system set up by the sanctuary system that was set up um, is a system to deal with sin. It was set up to deal with sin. It, saying it wasn't is incorrect. Um, um, the, the, yeah, the, um, yeah, the, the sacrifice of Christ, sorry, yeah, sacrifice of Christ, as we know, is perfect, but um, it wasn't an afterthought, and God didn't need to... to it, oh, yeah, the one thing we keep saying is that if, if they had sinned, blah, 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 if, it's not if. God knew that sin would come, so when, stop saying if, when it was going to happen, God knew what was going to happen, he provided a sacrifice, and it wasn't an afterthought, and the system of in the, in the system of the sanctuary system, sorry, I'm speaking a bit fast, the sanctuary system was set up was set up to deal with sin. To say that it wasn't is inaccurate. Um, I, I'd like to come back on that. What, what then would have, if that system was set up to deal with sin, why was Christ required to die? If the system was doing it, was there a need for Christ to die? And, and not that it was imperfect, it was designed to do what it was doing. It was never designed to take away my sin. And you cannot ask the system to do what it was not designed to do. It is only Christ's death that can take away my sin, not the sacrifice of bullocks. Okay, and because you. the specification within 
the, 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 the sacrifices that were brought, they had to be of a certain age. They had to be spotless. They had to be pure. They pointed to yeah. Jesus, so the perfect sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. As, as, yeah. As, we were, as we've been saying, you know, um, the lambs that were being killed was, was just a type pointing to Jesus the, and the, the Lamb of God. And John, John the Baptist came as a forerunner and he, 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 he pointed to Jesus as the Lamb, as the Lamb, a big L, Lamb, capital L, who takes away the sin of the world. And Romans said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I mean, the, the blood of animals, animals was impossible, impossible to take away our sins. That is why Jesus had to come and shed his blood. The Lamb of God came to shed his blood to take away our sins. Animal blood couldn't do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sabbath, everyone. Um, I'm going to be short. When I look at the lesson, I notice that there were animals brought into the temple to be killed. None of these animals were put on the cross. Have we noticed? None of the animals were put on the cross except for the man Christ Jesus. And today, we are serving a risen Savior who is in the world today that take away my sin and your sin. He is there interceding on our behalf. So therefore, let us avail ourselves and worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, Christian friends, as we know, the... Um, the the sacrificial system was designed to be a symbol, as it has been said. It has been, uh, um, it was designed to be a symbol, um, and it addresses the, um, the, the need of the people at the time. When they sin, they were required to um, perform uh, these rites. Um, but when, uh, but when uh, the real sacrifice arrived, and when the real sacrifice died um, our salvation was um, was secured and uh, it is only it is only us that can that can prevent us from being from being recipient of that salvation secured by the death of Jesus Christ so I want you to know today that salvation is yours for the keeps and it is only you that can circumvent that that salvation because it has already been paid for it is secured on your behalf you know I, I looked at I looked at these um, these um, adverts on TV they talk about these pure cremation and uh, you pay for your funeral it, when you um, when you die, your 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 family members, they do not have to worry. They just go and find these people, and uh, it's already being paid for. You don't have to come up with any money if they're still around. But I want you to know there is no uncertainty about what Jesus has done for you and me. It is absolutely certain. And there is uh, the, the perfect element of what Christ has done for you. The thing that troubled me, however, is the, um, is the cross bit. Um, because the, we talk about the cross and, and consider the cross to be a, a wonderful icon. But in times past, anyone who dies uh, on a cross... Um, Cut through. It was a. It was a symbol of shame, and degradation, and 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 so on. And here a curse. And here we are talking about 
Jesus dying on the cross, um, a symbol of shame and, and uh, outcast. And, and so how can we square that? How can we square that? The cross is a symbol of shame and disgrace. And yet we are talking about Jesus' his perfect salvation, um, sacrifice. I, uh, uh, Paul, Paul argues that um, the cross was a stumbling block to the Jews because they did not expect that the Messiah would come and die on the cross. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it was foolishness to the Gentiles uh, because how could somebody die this death of ignominy and still be able to save the world but uh, Paul also argued that to, to these people it is foolishness Paul used Paul teaches that the cross which was foolishness and, and stumbling block to the rest of the, the, the world becomes the hope of these people what we need to see is that the, the Christians, when they emerged out of, after Christ had died and, and, and Christianity was emerging, many of them still held on to the old sacrificial system. And then they recognized the hope of the cross. And then they start preaching fervently the cross. When they recognized the, the hope of the cross, the power that was evident in this cross. And then this cross became not a symbol of shame anymore to them, but of hope, something to glorify in, because they recognize the power evident in the cross. Thank you. Um, I think Lorraine hit the nail on the head, really. Um, she said uh, Christ became a curse. This, this, place, <laughs> this place is the worst, the scummiest, the most degraded, depraved, horrible place in the whole universe yet God in 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 our lives in in this world kings and queens we have to bow down to them in in the in the in, in God's God's reality he comes and bows and dies and becomes crap for us that's just that he became a curse he went the highest became the lowest the first shall become low. that's what happened that's why he's that's why he deserves our worship that's why Amen. thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You see, Christian friends, Christian friends, um, Jesus came and he took the shame. He took your shame and my shame. He took the, um, the scourge of society. He took, he took the, the weight of um, degradation on his shoulders. Um, for you and me. So when we, when we look at Jesus, when we see Jesus hanging on the cross, the cross of shame, it is because he bore your sin and my sin. And rightly so, he was there as a symbol of shame. Why? Because he was carrying um, the shame of the world on his shoulders. But praise God, that did not deter him. He knew what that meant. He knew that how he would be perceived. He knew all of that. But that did not deter him. Why? Because he was on a mission to save you and me. He carried you and me on his back. He took your burden and my burden. He took your shame and my shame. He paid your penalty and your penalty and my penalty all at once. In doing that, however, in doing that, he has secured salvation once and for all for you and me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Even though he walked the walk of shame. And even though he hung there on the cross, a symbol of shame, today you and I are victorious because of what Christ has done. This is wonderful news. And so this lesson today, this lesson today is a powerful lesson for us today. It ought not to be for head knowledge. 
it must be for a transformation of heart, a upwardly mobile progress until Jesus comes and takes you to glory with him. What a day that is going to be. Christian friends. Just, just one quick, quick comment, and that is the cross was not the end. There is an ongoing work in the sanctuary in heaven. The, 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 the old system was not designed to finish at the cross. The rest of humanity, the rest of Christianity has stopped at the cross. And I, I'm, I am proud to say only Adventists have moved from the cross to the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. So the work was not finished at the cross. It is continuing in heaven. That's where our sanctification is occurring. Amen. 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 And, and elders, I'm so glad I have, I have this wonderful um, um, team with me. The, the, the work that is going on right now in the sanctuary is to um, seal um, your name and my name and and, uh, and everybody else's name who walked in Jesus' footsteps sealed you for eternity, handpicking you for eternity. And uh, you must rejoice today because Jesus walked the walk of shame for you and for me. May God bless you today. Uh, may God bless you.